good afternoon, everyone, and it's so great to be back in good old Wayham, Mass, gateway to Cape Cod. I hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving and enjoy, I'm enjoying the holiday season. The weather is extremely mild, and I have a, a nice show tonight, a, a wonderful guest. She's got quite a story to tell. She's quite a rich uh, a fellow person in uh, foreign languages, figure skating, coll collegiate studies, and we want to talk all about that. But before we get to her, I've got to read these incredible underwriters, and then we will commence per usual. You guys don't know how it works, so here we go. So we got Carver Jewels and Carver, Ronald Diamond, Lyle, Delano, Goldsmiths. Uh, we got a, a new one, a Rebel Hair Studio in Norwell, uh, featuring hair restoration for men and women in state of the art skin care with a Flamir, uh, Plamir Fibroblast uh, Plama Pen, if you can say that fast 100 times, you're a tongue twister champion. We got New England Floorscapes in Middleborough. Yeah, that one, last one was in Norwell, Rebel Hair Studio. We got Northern Lights Tobacco Shop with Hippie Flavors in Plymouth. They're in New one. We got Thomas Brothers Incorporated in Carver. We got Cupcakes and Kibble in Plymouth, Treats for Dogs. We got Crazy Axes Rec Center in Hanover. We got Angelo's Auto Repair in Plymouth. They're in New one. We got Hairway to Heaven Family Salon in Norwell. We got Pacini's Pizza in Middleborough. They deliver. We got Pembroke Radiator in Pembroke. We got Tom Auto in Middleborough. We got Rodney's Kitchen in Halifax. We got the law offices of Kahalane and Stefani PC in Brockton, specializing in personal injury and per workman's comp law. We got Dina's Hair and Nail Unisex Salon in Quincy. They're in New one. We got DNS Auto Works in Abington, right on Route 58. We got the Gunrunner LLC in Middleborough, dedicated to your Second Amendment rights, the Second Amendment Freedom Store. We got Salon Giovanni in Marshfield. And we got Ocean Street Auto Repair and Service in Marshfield. And I want to thank you guys very much. And now on that note, I'll now officially introduce Nicole Lupo, this lovely young lady here. I actually had her sister on as a guest back in the spring at my Area 58 location. Um, Nicole, I, I know it's been uh, quite, a, <laughs> quite a day. We, you, you know, we had to take, I had to pick her up. She does not have an American driver's license at this time, um, and that's cool. I enjoyed the ride very much. I learned a lot about her, and tonight we're going to feature her as, I, as much as I learned, so you folks in Wayham and vicinity can learn as well. So, Nicole, again, thank you for being on my show tonight. Thank you for having me. Okay. All right. Well, you were born in, she was born in Nazareth, Israel, Jesus' hometown. How about that? Yeah. So, she, you got you to gotta say, she's, she's, she's so sacred, I would say. I, I figured that when I met her, and, uh, and I, I found that out to, to be quite incredible. So, well, Nicole, tell me about your childhood. You know, I know you, I know you spent, till you, till you were like six years old in Israel, and then you came here to the United States. And I've always, I always take pride in having people on from all over the world. So let's talk about that. Talk about your childhood. Let me know what you did as a child, and see how, let's see how it inspired you to do what you're doing now. And we'll talk about your figure skating and dancing and everything else. So go ahead. We'll start with your childhood, and we'll work our way forward. So go on. <laughs> and I'll, yeah, interject with questions if I have them. So. Okay. Well, with my childhood, when I was back in Israel growing up, I lived in a daycare. Oh, hold we on had a second. Daycare back in the home. show? Back in Israel. Oh, Israel. I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, she speaks with a slight dialect, That's, <laughs> as, as well she should. Okay. okay. Um, my childhood, I was around little kids all the time. Okay. Uh, you mean, we had when a daycare. You were still, when you were one yourself or after that? Well, while I was one myself and even when I started school since I went to first grade there. Okay. In Israel? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, we had a daycare back home. Okay. So I was constantly helping out as soon as I got home from school. Um, that's the only part I remember about that. When we moved to the U.S., um, learning English was hard. Okay. I'll have to say that. Why did you move to the U.S.? What was the reason for that? Well, see, I have an older brother. And you, and you were six at the time. I was six at the time, yes. And I have an older brother who was 14. Yep. Yep. And that's about the age where the IDF starts looking at you because at 16 they start to the, the like, train you. You're talking the about Israeli Isra Defense Forces. Israel. Ah, yes. so he didn't want to. Get, I understand. Yes. And my parents did not want him going. Yeah. Because it is dangerous. That after is fascinating. All. True. I, I. That's amazing. Okay. Yeah. I get it. I know. I. I, heard, I, I know it's dangerous. Yeah. Being, being a soldier in Israel is not a fun job. I would think. Okay. All right. That's, I mean, you know, but it worked out pretty good for all of you. It did. It did. Okay. All right. Now you, so you came to the U.S. when you were six, you said. Yes, and about. Learned, you, you had to learn English, and you, and you did it very well. And you're fluent in, four, you said, four languages? Approximately, yes. Approximately. Well, okay. You're fluent in Russian. You're fluent in Hebrew. In English and in Spanish. Spanish, okay. That's incredible. Um, I, and I heard you, 
when, I, when we were riding down here tonight, you were talking to your mom on the phone in, in fluent Russian, and I'm, and I was thinking, what, what kind of bad things could she be saying about me? Uh, <laughs> well, you didn't, you, you didn't sound like you had a temper going on, so I guess maybe it wasn't so bad. Yeah, not so bad. Oh, good. Okay. All right. Well, tell me, how did you learn those languages? Uh, and then how did you learn English? <laughs> well, while we lived in Israel, I was surrounded by Hebrew, right. obviously, because that's the language that they speak there. What about Yiddish? Yiddish is old. It's more like... Synagogue. Biblical times? Biblical yeah. times, okay. The only Yiddish I know is a song that my grandfather, may he rest in peace, taught me. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, but with Hebrew being outside, at home we spoke in Russian. Okay. And so obviously I learned that just from hearing and interacting with my parents. And then when we moved to the U.S., because the surroundings was in English, yes. it took a while, but I eventually learned that. Yeah, okay. And at one point growing up when I was in elementary school, my parents made friends with this uh, Hispanic family. Okay. And the dad in the family only ever spoke to me in Spanish. He refused to speak to me in English. So that's how I learned that. Huh. Interesting. Well, the fact that you were able to pick it up shows that you, you, know, you, have, you have a pretty good uh, receptive tendency in, there, in, your, in your brain. Have you ever been... Um, I mean, you know, you told me your grades were pretty much average. They were decent. But have you, have you, ever, have you ever been, like, t tested for IQ? I, I assume it's pretty high. It must be. <laughs> I've never been tested for IQ, no. Okay. Yeah, but, I mean, I couldn't do that. Just because one person only spoke to you in a foreign language, you picked it up like that. He did, I mean, did he at least teach you what, what he was saying? Well, I mean, it took a while to understand. But yeah. when you know the context and everything like that, eventually you do just Are you still Are you still friends with them today? Uh, kind of, yeah. Oh, I, okay. re I saw the family, not the dad, but the kids and his wife earlier this year, actually. Okay. Like October. Well, that's good. It's nice to see, you know, it's nice to know that you're still in touch with them. All right, tell me about, all right, now let's fast forward a little bit. You're, you're a student at Emmanuel College in Boston, and, and you're majoring in neuroscience, right? Yes. Okay. What is your goal for, your, for, for the future with that that you have? Well, I'm actually in pre-med right now. Oh, okay. So... <laughs> My goal is to go to med school and eventually become a psychiatrist. Oh, a psychiatrist. And, yeah. You certainly had someone in your, you certainly had someone who has a, hist a long history of psychiatric care in, in, as company on the way here. I don't know if you know that, <laughs> but but I don't know. Maybe it'll help. <laughs> why do you why do you why are you picking the psychiatric field over the physical medical field? I guess you feel that you you, you I mean I'm right. You told me something that was pretty cool. You told me you tutored children and uh, you did. You tutored children. And that in doing that, you you know you, you had to you had to help them deal with learning disabilities, which is obviously something that come to mind when you think about psychiatric care because they kind of like they kind of go together. If some if a kid has a hard time learning, he might have he might have psychological issues that have to be addressed. And I'm wondering if if all all things all all that being said, maybe that's you know why you feel more inspired to to fo to follow that that path. And I I think it's great. But is that true? Uh, not necessarily. No. Okay. Um, growing up, I always knew that I wanted to do something in the medical field. Okay. In fifth grade, from fifth grade until I'd have to say freshman year of high school, I thought that I wanted to go into cardiothoracic surgery. Okay. I still find it very interesting, but in my opinion, that's too long in school. Not only that, <laughs> I mean, if you, I mean, I, I couldn't handle, you know, cutting the guy's aorta or his, or his of his ventricle, of, you know, of his cardiovascular ventricle, of his lungs, which is what you'd have to do if you were, if you were in surgery like that, right? Ooh, I, I'm I squeamish. Know. I've always found that enticing. Okay. But also, throughout middle school and high school, I realized that I really enjoy talking to people and helping them through their problems. And so I was like, oh, okay, maybe let's go into therapy. Um, but that wasn't ideal. That wasn't ideal to me or to my family. So the next step from therapy where I can still do that is to become a psychiatrist. Okay. Because it's more of a doctor. You can also prescribe medicine and everything. And now my dream job at one point is to work at a psych ward. Okay. You mean in a mental hospital? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I mean, even for the criminally insane, possibly? You wouldn't mind that? I would not mind that at all. Wow. You are <laughs> br one brave lady, I've got to say. <laughs> ah, okay, that's interesting. That's amazing. I see these, I love, 
you, you have so many. Th I mean, we t we covered so much on the way on the way down here tonight, and yet there's more about you that I, that I even that I even dare to glean to try to glean. Well, tell me about now. Let's talk about what you do for hobbies. You like to figure skate. You talk, you do you do that. You like to dance. You do that. I like to incorporate everything. So let's talk about how you got into that. All those things. Uh, well, so I I do have to thank my parents for that. Oh, good. Um, I thank them too. Okay. <laughs> Growing up, they didn't really have opportunities to learn to do a lot of stuff. Okay, you mean and living in Israel, you mean? No, they actually grew up back in the USSR. Uh, okay, yep. So when they had us, they wanted to give us a childhood that they didn't have and the knowledge that they didn't get. Okay. So as soon as we moved to the U.S., uh, they put me in figure skating lessons right away. And you were, and, and you were, more, you jumped at the chance. Yes. Or you spun at the chance, no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Good. All right. That's sweet. And that was how, how old were you when, this was like when you were six. So you've been doing this for a while. Like I started years. when I was seven, yeah. So 12 years you've been doing this. About. Wow. <laughs> okay. Have you ever won any awards for or, or um, I, done any competitions? I did one competition. Okay. But, again, only one because they're too expensive. It's exp oh, it is? But it's also fun. You prefer, it's good, it's, it's good, you know, physical therapy for you. It is. And it keeps you on, you know, no pun intended, again, on your toes, <laughs> right? And you do, and you, and you skate with your sister, too. Yes. Who was a great guest on my show back in, in the spring. Okay. Um, when you skate, you skate, you, I think you told me you skate a lot with her, but anyone else, or is it just mostly her? Um, at the moment, since we recently started lessons again, it's just me and her. Okay. We have a semi-private lesson, and even though we're in two different levels, but, yeah. Okay. Well, wh whose level is higher? I guess yours must be. <laughs> it is. Well, you know, you, you, you know you're, 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 you're full grown, and she's not. Maybe that has something to do with it. When she gets more coordinated in practice, she'll, she'll reach the same level. But at least you're, you're, it's friendly competition, right? <laughs> it is. With her. That's great. Okay. I'm there cheering on the sidelines when it's her turn to try a new thing, and I'm like, yay, you got this. Well, that's great. Okay. So you taught her a lot of the stuff, the pirouettes and all the, the moves that, the Nancy Kerrigan stuff that she knows, right? Well, pirouettes are for dance, but yes. Well, don't they do it in figure skating, too, or ice skating? No, they don't do pirouettes and ice skating. Okay, they I do one they... foot spins, but not pirouettes. Well, that's what I mean. Isn't the same, it's not the same thing? No. Okay, what's the difference? Uh, I mean, you're in the you spin in the air, right? When you spin, no, <laughs> you don't. Okay, you don't spin. That's the difference. If it's a pirouette, it's in the air. If it's a spin, it's not in the air, right? Well, okay. So a pirouette is also on the ground. It's also technically considered a one foot spin, but okay. the technique for going into it and the name itself and what it stems from is completely different. Okay. All right. I guess I guess you kind of have to know the, the lingo when I and you do and I don't. But I'm glad I asked because. Inquiring minds want to know, obviously. <laughs> All right. So now, when you, I'm just wondering, do you find, I mean, you find, I assume that if somebody that wants to, you know, be a psychiatrist, you, 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 want, to, you, you, want, to, you want to be able to calm people down, a lot of, especially if you're going to work in a psych ward. And I guess maybe something that calms you down would be something you might recommend to them or something that would make, make, would make you be able to set a better example for them to calm down if, if they need, if need be, correct? Yes. I, I assume there's a connection. I know there's a connection. <laughs> there's a connection between everything and all that stuff. Okay. Um, all right. Now, when, are you ever considering, now that you know four different languages, I assume you'll be, that'll really enrich your opportunities for patients from different ethnic groups to, to work with. Yeah. I've, I've actually, like, very much considered that. I do want to work with a lot of different people. A I feel like that's different. Yeah. You know, yes. Speaking in different languages. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that that's you know that's the way to go. Um, so, I mean, that's pretty cool. Psych ward. Are, are you are you gonna just do work in a psych ward? You're not gonna have your own little private office. Well, I can't have a private office from what right when I start. You can't. Mm -hmm. Is that the law? It's not, but nobody will take me seriously if I do, because you have to work your way up there. No kidding. That's amazing. So you actually have to deal with the, the, the real school balls. And I, and I know I'm using that. You've got to understand, I've been through therapy my whole I mean, not, I'm not currently in therapy, but when I, was four, when I was four years old, my parents didn't know what to do. They literally sent me to four or five therapists who told them I was psycho, and I almost got committed <laughs> a couple of times. I, I mean, and the only reason I didn't get committed at seven was because... 
The tuition for the, for the hospital for emotionally disturbed children in Providence, Rhode Island was $10,000. My parents couldn't afford it. So <laughs> I'm lucky because I don't, I don't want to think what that would have been like. It would have been horrible. And I'm not saying that some people don't need to be institutionalized, but I, think I, I don't think I did. You know, I mean, I don't know. I'm glad I wasn't. That's all I can say. I'm glad we might not be having this conversation now. They used to do, I believe they used to do shock, treatment, shock therapy for people, especially even children. Back in the, we're talking 55 years ago in 1967 when this almost went down. Um, now that having been said, what kind of therapy, what kind of you know training are you learning to deal with this sort of this stuff? Well, at the moment, I'm not learning any training. At the moment, any training that I do have is something that I have taught myself. Okay. That I have done my own research for. Majority of the training essentially comes in med school. Oh, yeah. Pre-med is well, you when pre you get are you, are you all the background. Me, what you're in is now pre-med? Yes. Okay. And, and how many years do you have to do that? Uh, you, four years. Oh, so so you, I have two, well, two more years You have two more years. Wow. Yes. All right. What, is the, what does the training consist of? Uh, for pre-med, it's just your normal classes to get yourself into medical school. And then the training there are classes again understanding how the brain works understanding how all of the psychiatric problems work and how vastly different they are because at the end of the day they're all on a spectrum and then it comes your internship your residency your fellowship and then once you finish all of that then you can finally like con be considered officially a doctor and that might take another four or five years for you so, yeah, so the overall amount of... I mean, you're only 19, so that's plenty of time. Yeah, the overall amount of school that you need to do to become a psychiatrist is 12 years. Wow, so, so you still get another 10 years. I still got another 10 years. Well, okay. Um, now, are there any internships available that they give you in the meantime? Uh, there are. There's actually a couple internships. Like, you are required, at least in my college, to even to apply to medical school, have at least two internships under your belt. Right. But what, are they, what does that include? What would, they, what would that consist of doing for you? On, it could be anything related to medicine. It could be, be therapy. Yeah. It could be research. It could be, like, just intern like shadowing at a hospital yeah something with medicine by shadowing you mean just just keeping a lookout uh, keeping a lookout helping out yeah wow wow that's that's that, i have to admit that's brave um so what about like there's a difference obviously between psychiatry and social work obviously social work probably doesn't require all the, the you know the schooling that you what you're doing does right and but, they, but you want to go to the next level i mean I mean, you wouldn't consider like being a guidance counselor in a school as well. I mean, you'd probably be great at that because you deal with children. But that's not what your that's not what your aim is right now. Yeah, no. Okay, you want the you want the big stuff. And I do. Obviously, it pays more. I would assume. I know it does. I know it does because my last my last therapist was was on the verge of charging me two hundred and fifty bucks for a fifty minute session, and I almost after thirteen years of seeing him, I got cured in a hurry after that when I found out. <laughs> but that doesn't mean he wasn't great because he was. He was, you know. I mean, over my experience with psychiatrists over the years, I mean, I've seen quite a few off and on. I, when, in, when the, you know, I don't know if you're aware of this, but when the, cent, when the 20th century was winding down, there was, a, I mean, I have OCD very bad. I have autism, too. Okay, you're talking to someone with autism here. Hopefully that'll help you. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, it'll, it'll help your training. Um, the fact that I'm doing a show like this is pretty cool, given my situation. So what that means is, and, and you're going to probably deal with a lot of people like this, somebody that's got OCD, is going to be is going to be obsessed with a lot of stuff that most people you know don't just don't even pay attention to. When the 20th century was winding down, there was a I don't know if you know who Nostradamus was. He was a he was a guy that supposedly lived in the in the 15th century near Paris, and he could have, he had visions of the future. One of the visions he had was that we were going to be we were going to have, the United States was going to be attacked with nuclear weapons in 1999, and I was freaking out over that. Because things were happening at the late, at the end of the 20th century that were kind of like looking like they were leading up to it. We were, you know, we're starting to really knock heads with Russia. Not that we aren't now, obviously. And, and I know 
as someone who's Russian yourself, and I'm Russian too. I have, I told you, half my ancestry it is. But as a, but as a United States citizen, when you work, when you hear tough rhetoric between the leaders, and then you had the thing with with President Bill Clinton and the Monica Lewinsky scandal, which I'm sure you're familiar with, probably. We don't have to go over it, but but it was, I mean, it was a pretty wild scheme, a wild thing because. What, you, what I was worried about was the fact that he was doing everything. He bombed a couple of pill factories in Africa to try and, for what, what they did, with something called Wag the Dog. He was trying to, try, he was trying to throw, throw his scandal off, off course so people wouldn't you know, call him on it. And instead, he, all he did was piss off the, you know, the, wor the worst terrorist in history at the time, Osama bin Laden. And that's why 9-11 happened. And I know you weren't even born then. But I'm just saying, that's why I was freaking out about it. Now. That's and that's somebody. That's what OCD does. It makes you it makes you freak out over things that most people don't. So what I'm saying to you is, you're you're probably going to come across a lot of that when you when you get into the field, and I'm sure you yeah. and I'm sure you'll handle it well. Hopefully. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, but as far as prescribing meds, I mean, from what I I have a friend who is who's severely bipolar. Okay, he's a good guy. He's he's very very smart. But he's delusional. I mean, he doesn't like to take his meds because they create, they have these weird side effects. They have terrible side effects. They create, they create, they make them lethargic. They, um, you know, they, they possibly bound them up, constipation, whatever. Now, but he has these. He's got, he's kind of like caught in a catch twenty two because he really imagines weird stuff. Like he imagines he's, that his grandfather's Joe Cocker, the singer who passed away a few years ago. He thinks he's married and has twelve kids. But he, but he also. I mean, but he's brilliant because he actually went to video school and learned how to do videography. And in 2011, when I was doing, when I was still doing Topic Time on the road, when I'd be going on a road show, you know, to do on, on, you know, off location, on location shoots. One time he came with me up to Salem to do a shoot up there in 2011, and he was he did a great job for me. He ran the he held the camera steady. He uh, did a, he you know he did all the lighting everything you know and I and I'm so happy to he'd been committed like for several months and when I started Topic Time in 2010, he and I were actually writing a, f a film script together and then he had, he got committed and I started the show and then and then he got released the following summer and that's when he went with me up to up up to Salem. Now he's he's been in and out of institutions his whole life. He's now almost 38. Um, really good guy. So. That's, this is the kind of thing that, you know, you, you know you're, you're going to find people, you know, the prescribing medication for people might be an issue because they, some of them might not want to take it just because of the side effects. And you know, you know that there are side effects from, to those yeah. medications, of course. You're probably learning all that about learning that already, right? Okay. All right. Just as long as you know that. Okay. Yeah. The hope in this whole field is that this generation they are more aware of mental illness okay. than the previous generations, and that's so, and that is shown. And so the hope is that there will be strides in of the course. medical field for that, so that better medications come at, come right. out that have less side effects, or yeah. better treatments come out that do not require as many medications. Right, and that's okay. the hope yeah. at the moment. What about like doing Rorschach stuff? You know what that is, right? No. You know, you know what a Rorschach test is? I'm sure you'll learn it eventually. No. A Rorschach test is where they take, they take these cardboard, uh, well, they take these cardboard uh, car uh, pot, you know, like squares with, with black symbols on them. They're all kinds of different, like abstract images. And people are supposed oh, no. to, yeah, <laughs> right. And people look at them and they're supposed to th tell you what, what comes to mind. And, it, and based on that, you're supposed to be able to analyze, you know, psychoanalyze them more, more reliably. You never, you, you, have you ever never worked with them before? I've never worked with them before. Okay. Well, I have never worked with any tests or anything yet. Well, that, okay, but I, I assume it's gonna, it's in the, it's in the cards that you will. Yes. Okay. Wow. Okay. Um, now, as far as like, I know you like to talk to people. You're very good at it. Have you, have you, have you, in, in spite of the fact that you're not a doctor yet? Do you feel that you've ever helped anybody cope with something that you know that without you they might not be able not, not have been able to help help get them through a hard time? Absolutely. Okay, a lot of people. I or, wouldn't say a lot, but definitely a handful at least. Okay, that's great. I mean, that's obviously so. I, it's, it's it's obviously you're bound for glory. It looks like. Okay, now okay. Well, guess what, uh, Nicole? We're down to the final five minutes of the show. 
I hope we covered as much about you as we could. I, when I do a show like this, I always like to just say, let's let, let's let the chips fall where they may, and I think we had a great interview. Um, so like I said, what I, what I want you to do is just to look at look at the camera, give shouts out to a few people in, in any language you want, <laughs> and then we'll wrap the show up with my music the way we began it. Sounds great. Um, hi, family. Hi, friends. Hello, Michelle. You've been on the show. Hey, Michelle. <laughs> How you doing? Um, Your sister was great. You were great. <laughs> yeah, he did not know that we were related. I did not know. I knew now. I see the resemblance. <laughs> Um, hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Hi, brother. Your brother, right. Okay. <laughs> um, that's about all of the shout-outs I have. Okay. I'll well, be completely honest. I, that's okay. I hope, you, I hope you had fun with me, and I hope we covered as much about you as we could. You know. I did. I did have fun with you. I do want to make one correction, go, however. Go you ahead. did state that I was Russian. I'm not. Okay. Well, all right. Well, that's fine. <laughs> well, we're, well, but you, you're Israeli, right? I am Israeli, yes, okay. and my parents were, my parents grew up, and I believe were also born in Ukraine, so not, yeah. no Russian, no, but. But you know the language, okay. I, I know the it. language, because okay. they did grow up in they the U.S. I got it, okay, I, I understand, and if you had fun with me, what I tell, what I ask every guest, I, I, I may have asked Michelle, but Michelle was, you know, only 13, so I don't know how many people she knows, I'm sure she knows quite a few, but like, I, may, I probably asked, if you had fun with me, Spread the word about Topic Time. I'd love to get more guests. You have my digits, obviously, my number. You can have them contact me. Yeah. And, 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 and you were great. Now, I just want to explain something to the people of Wayham. I've just been recently profiled by a, by a bunch of podcasters on a TV podcast up, I believe, in Rochester, New York. And they really did a wonderful job taking clips of my shows, going back to the very first one I did in 2010 at my first location in Marshfield. And they kind of parodied me, but they also thought it was a pretty cool show because the guy that sent him the clips was a guest on my show and he's a big fan and, I, and that's sort of going viral and we I wanted they only mentioned that I did my show at two locations when in fact I, I definitely could count Wayham as one of my one of my family uh, for the uh, locations familial locations for topic time so I just want to just give you know give a shout out to you guys and if uh, if anyone wants to see that parody of me it's pretty cool uh, let me know. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to text it to Zach, our producer, and if he wants to play it on Wayham Cable, that would be great. Um, and that's it. So just know I'm, you, you, you know, you guys are part of the Topic Time family as well. So on that note, Nicole, you ready to wrap the show up? Do I... H A double R I S O N spells Harrison. Harrison. Great job. You still got it. Hey, there you go. <laughs>